Hey guys, welcome back. I'm just going to do a quick little update of the coppice slash Pollard sumac uh, system that I have established. I'll show you what the difference between a coppice and a Pollard is, why we do it, and uh, you know, it was one of my first videos. So this will be just like a quick little update video on what the system looks like a, a little while later. Okay, so just to situate everybody, um, we've been doing some wood chips, adding some wood chips where it's been thin on the pond. So we're at the pond here. There's the bucket for the wood chips. Um, so we're at the pond here and um, hopefully this isn't making you guys too sick. So right behind us at the pond, this is where I have my coppice um, and pollard sumac system. Now, sumacs are great trees, they're good food for bees, they're good food for birds. Um, you can also make a tea with the berries. So they're actually very, uh, um, they're very valuable trees, but they're very quick growing and they can handle severe disturbance, cutting right down to the ground. So um, this south facing hill is an area that I thought at one point I'd like to build swales on and I built one at the top of the hill. As we go further down the hill, um, you're getting less and less sun out of it because of the height of some of these trees to the south of this hill. A giant cedar, um, we have a giant, um, uh, I think it's an elm in the back there, and then more cedar, and we've got some larger sumacs up there. So as you go down, down further the hill, you're getting less sun. I'd have to remove some of those trees, which I don't want to do. So instead of doing swale food forest in here, I might one day, what I decided to do was a coppice and sumac in order to generate biomaterial to make biochar. So uh, carbon based material in order to burn it under pyrolysis, evacuate the gases out of the cell walls and uh, mend it into the soils to simulate the terra preta soils of the Amazon. All right, so that's fancy words, but basically all I did is I came in here and I clear cut. So I cut everything down. I cut the whole thing down because I know that sumac like to regrow and regrow it did. Look at the regrowth. This is one year later, the regrowth on this system. Just to give you an idea of what this used to look like on that hill, here's another sumac stand that I have um, that I did not coppice or pollard, I've just left it kind of wild. This is kind of the edge of where you get into my zone four, what you know, permaculture is called a wild zone. So I, I'm not really touching this area. I guess it would be zone three because I'm kind of down there. Zone four is where it's totally wild. You just leave it alone. Um, so I did not cut this. I didn't coppice this at all. So this is what that hill used to look like. And you know, it's, it's just full of lush, young, vegetative growth this year you know and just to kind of bring that point across is you can see the old trees that I didn't cut down how tall they were they're the same height um, as the uh, the area down below there so you can actually see I left one up here as well you can see the height of it that's how tall it used to be so from uh, an area that looked literally Sorry for spinning the camera. Literally exactly like that, down there, we've turned it into a uh, biological material generating facility, a carbon sink facility, because those big trees are kind of done sinking the carbon. They're not really gonna grow a whole lot more. They're not really gonna sink a bunch more carbon. The young ones, however, will. So I made biochar with the big ones. I used some for wood. I use some for trellises in the garden, which are, which are still up, and uh, now the new, the new generation comes in to make more carbon. So the difference between a pollard and a coppice is that they're both very aggressive cuts. One will take a tree and cut it right at ankle height, that's a coppice. 
and a pollard is where you cut it a little higher, typically around shoulder height. And basically all you're going to do in both situations is uh, severely stress the tree. It'll try to regrow from the bottom, from the root system. Um, and it'll basically just change the way the shape of the tree is. So if you wanted to keep, um, you know, vision lines down low and you wanted to keep shade up above, as well as if you wanted to prevent the new growth from getting browsed by animals like deer, then you would maybe choose a pollard. So you would cut the tree off and you can see where I did it on this one. Um, and you can see how this one here didn't actually survive the pollard. It was a little bit of a lower cut and for whatever reason it didn't survive it. So this was just a trial. I just did one pollard because I wanted to, uh, I wanted to coppice this whole thing, get it all crashed right down to the ground. I didn't want a bunch of sticks uh, standing up. It would kind of look kind of junky in the winter time. Anyways, the beautiful tree now in the spring. So it is as junky as it might look in the winter time with all these uh, sticks sitting up when you just first do your pollard. They actually will, I think, end up looking a little better. You know, this whole system, if I'd pollarded the whole thing, would look incredible. And I would have some area to walk under and some shade to enjoy. I could cut pathways out and that sort of thing. So I might pollard the next time. Um, the coppice system, however, I feel had a more vigorous regrowth. And I think because you take such a volume of the tree away, it just really stimulates a massive regrowth. Now some trees you cannot do this to. If I try to coppice a birch, for example, and it's too late in its life, it'll die. If I get it while it's in its youth vegetative state, then you can actually create birch uh, coppice systems that are thousands of years old. So if I get down in here, you can actually see um, how vigorous we have the growth of this tree. It's kind of almost like a, you know, a pseudo bamboo forest look. It's kind of super cool, I think. So, um, the reason why you want to do this is because when the wood gets too thick, so first off, the, the amount of growth that you get off of a coppice is going to far exceed just planting new trees because you have an established root system. And um, when you cut, you get such vigorous regrowth. Like if I put in brand new one-year-old trees, I wouldn't get this kind of growth out of the trees. So when you have an established stand like a sumac stand, you can really generate a ton of carbon. All this carbon is out of the atmosphere. This is all carbon dioxide that was in the atmosphere that's now in wood. So this is a very, very fast way to sequester and store carbon, especially if you take this and instead of turning it into wood chips, for example, I turn it into biochar, which is very, very stable and will stay in the ground, you know, for thousands of years versus wood chips, which will decompose in a couple and then return back uh, as CO2 back into the air. Some will become soil, but so some does get sequestered, but overall um, turning it into biochar and then putting it in the soil is much more stable. So the amount of volume of carbon that I can do in a system like this far exceeds uh, planting new trees. So this is kind of my carbon sequestration on steroids system. And you can see the growth in here is just incredible. Okay, so back up at the top of this new swale that I did, we're kind of going to pop in here. Um, but I am in sandals and I just want to be careful about poison ivy in here. But we're going to pop in here and just take a look at the system from in here and you can see how much growth we have and much of this is going to be usable this year um, some of this stuff up at the top is going to be usable this year for sure it'll be uh, uh, maybe an inch or an inch and a half thick some of the stuff down here in this lower part of the swale I can get the golden rod out of the way um, is a little thinner so this might have to go another year there we go that might um, some of this bigger stuff here on the edges because it was able to get and further south because it was able to get so much sun you can see it put on a ton of growth this stuff is absolutely going to be harvested again this year and now from this point forward I did a big cut but now I'm going to transition into a system okay so from this point forward 
I don't just do a clear cut anymore because that's kind of wasting the photosynthesis of the year. So what I do is I do kind of like a one third or one quarter cut. So I'll cut one out of every three trees or one out of every four trees and I'll thin. And then I can harvest that wood. I'll take the biggest stuff this year. And then any area where there's big stuff, I'll try to leave up anything that's medium sized even and that'll come out next year. And I'll kind of rotate through the system like that not where I cut a third here and I leave those two thirds up. I'm actually gonna cut a third scattered throughout the whole entire coppice system. So um, in this way, I can generate tons of material for biochar. I can sequester literally tons of material for uh, climate change concerns, cooling the planet. You know, I can do at least my share of the part where I can feel like even if I have to make some concessions here and there on spending carbon to say go to work or whatever, I can kind of, you know, feel a little better that I'm doing something above and beyond what the average person's doing and cutting out some of, uh, you know, making a, a, a coppice or a sumac system, a sumac coppice system to sequester carbon. And then the second benefit obviously is for the gardens that this biochar once inoculated in the compost pile or now I'm going to inoculate it in my pond. I'm going to put it in um, basically porous containers and then I'm just going to sink it, wrap it in a cloth and then I'm going to put it in the pond to just sink and soak in the pond and the, the life in the water will uh, fill the biochar and then now when I'm inoculating my um, forest with it, I'm also inoculating it with life. Now some of the life will die because it's you know water-based life but quite a bit of the life actually will survive, especially mixed with compost. Maybe I'll do a little bit in the pond, a little bit in the compost, try to get a, a mix of healthy aerobic microbiology to put into the soil for my plants. So this is a soil building um, system on steroids and I set it up now and I go now into long-term systematic strategy for how I run it. My next video is going to touch on the same thing. I'm, I want to do a video on the differences between getting started and things, you know, that I say don't do, don't systematically mine your soil, don't ever till, that kind of stuff. There's time and places for everything and there's a lot of leeway for when you get a system going. The things that I teach with uh, pure sustainability, um, soil building, you know, don't mine your soil, constantly build soil. That's the, th the stuff that we do systematically as an ongoing process from here to forever. However, to get stuff started, sometimes, you know, pulling some weeds might be a good thing. Sometimes rototilling um, to stir up the ground and break compaction can be a good thing as a one-time system startup. We'll talk about that more in the next video. Thanks for watching. This is a follow-up of the coppice and sumac, uh, <laughs> coppice and pollard sumac. Why can't I say that? Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.